Okay, here's the last number section, 4.3, transformations of quadratics. So we started off our quadratic unit by looking at quadratics that are in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And what those look like to you, they might have looked something like this, y equals 5x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay, so this is the we looked at quadratics that were in this form to start the unit, and we used quadratics that were in this form to discover basic properties of a parabola, um, such as what the vertex of a parabola is, what an axis of symmetry is, and we also looked at um, what the basic shape of a parabola is. Um, we also discussed that you can tell it's going to be a quadratic relation by looking at the exponent on the variable. We see that there's a 2 up here, and okay, that means it's a second degree function. That means it's going to have the shape of a parabola. We know the shape of a parabola is a U-shaped function. Okay. So quadrats aren't always going to be given to you in this form, the standard form. There's two other forms they're going to take throughout the unit, vertex form and factored form. Both of those forms have their uses. Um, we're going to first today look at vertex form. This is vertex form right here, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So we know when you have the equation of any function, the x and the y stand for all of the points on the function. What do these other letters stand for? What does this a stand for? What does this h stand for? And what does this k stand for? So we're going to look at how varying those values change um, the shape and how they transform the actual quadratic function itself. Okay, so we're going to look at what happens when we vary these values of a, h, and k. So we're gonna, always going to compare our transformations to the most basic quadratic function y equals x squared. And this is the most basic, this is the graph of that right here, y equals x squared. So um, just quick, a quick review. Um, the axis of symmetry, I'll draw it on here, just make it a different color so we can see it. Hopefully you remember the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through the vertex of, of a quadratic function. So there's my axis of symmetry, it's the vertical line that goes through the vertex. Okay. So what's the equation of this axis of symmetry? Well, it's a vertical line. I know the equation of any vertical line is always x equals whatever the x-intercept is. It goes through the x-axis at 0. So it's x equals 0. Why is it x equals 0? Well, think, what are the coordinates of any point on this axis of symmetry? It, they're all 0 something. This is 0, negative 2. This point here is 0, negative 4. This point up here, 0, positive 4, okay? Every point on the axis of symmetry has the same x-coordinate. That's where it gets the equation x equals 0 from, okay? So now let's look at what's the vertex. Hopefully you remember that the vertex of a quadratic relation is the maximum or the minimum point of the parabola. For a parabola that opens up like this, this parabola has a minimum point because it never goes below this point right here. And what are the coordinates of that point? It is 0, 0. You should notice that there's a relationship between the x-coordinate of the vertex and the equation of the axis of symmetry. Because the axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex, okay, that means it's going to go through this point 0, 0. Therefore, every point on the axis of symmetry is going to have the same x-coordinate as whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is. Okay, so the equation of the axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is. Good. So let's go on and look at how, when we change the values of a, h, and k, a, h, and k, what happens to this basic graph of y equals x squared. So the first thing we're going to look at, how does varying the values of k work? So we're not going to deal with a or h right now. We're just going to leave them alone. We just want to look at how varying the values of k affects this graph of y equals x squared. So this is y equals x squared right here. And I'm going to look at these four different equations here. What does the equation of y equals x squared plus 3 look like, x squared plus 5, x squared minus 2, and x squared minus 4? And hopefully you've done the investigation and you've typed these in on your graphing calculator and you've seen what happens. I'll just do a quick review of what you would have got. y equals x squared plus 3. Compared to y equals x squared, the vertex is going to have moved up 1, two, three points. So this would be the graph of y equals x squared plus 3. It looks just like y equals x squared, but the vertex has been moved up three points. And y equals x squared plus 5 is going to look just like y equals x squared, but the vertex has been moved up one, two, three, four, five, five places on the y-axis. Okay. 
What about y equals x squared minus 2? Exactly the same as y equals x squared, but the vertex has been moved down two units. One, two. And y equals x squared minus 4 is just like y equals x squared, but it's been moved down. Oops. It's been moved down one, two, three, four units. Okay? So hopefully you've seen now. Um, you can tell how changing the value of k moves the parabola of y equals x squared um, along the y-axis here. So let's just do a quick summary of um, the k value. So to graph y equals x squared plus k, k represents the vertical translation. So varying the value of k vertically translates um, the, the graph of y equals x squared. If the k value is greater than zero, so if we have a positive value of k, the graph is translated k units up. So we saw when k was three, it moved three units up. So positive three, three up. If k is less than zero, so for example, when k was negative two, it moved down two. So if k is less than zero, the graph is translated k units down. So the k value, remember vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. We're looking at this k value right now. This k value is responsible for the vertical translation. Um, if, k is a, if k is greater than zero, so if it's a positive number, it moves up. If k is less than zero, so if it's a negative number, it moves down. Good. Now let's look at h. So we're not going to worry about a or k right now. We're just going to vary the value of h and see what happens to the parabola of y equals, the graph of y equals x squared. So the first equation, I have y equals x minus 1 squared. Um, when you type that on your graphing calculator, you should have seen that it moved um, one unit to the right. The vertex moved one unit to the right. So it's just like y equals x squared, but you move the vertex one unit to the right, and that gives you y equals x minus 1 squared. When you have y equals x minus 3 squared, you should have seen that it moves three units to the right. One, two, three. When you have y equals x plus 2 squared, you should have seen it's the exact same as y equals x squared, but it moves two units to the left. One, two units left. And when you have y equals x plus 3 squared, it moves three units to the left. So same as that y equals x squared, but you move the vertex one, two, three units to the left. Okay, so let's quickly summarize um, how varying the values of h translate this, this parabola um, y equals x squared along the x-axis. So we've seen that h moves the, the quadratic relation left and right, and we call that um, horizontal translation. Okay, so h represents the horizontal translation. This is where it gets a little bit tricky here. If h is greater than zero, the graph is translated h units to the right. Okay, so you might look back here and be like, hey, it looks like h is greater than zero here because it's positive here. But it's actually not. The h value right here is actually negative 2. And I'll explain why. Okay, so when h is greater than zero, the graph translates h units to the right. So let's say h is equal to positive 2. 2 is greater than zero, right? When we plug that into this equation here, y equals x minus h squared, when we plug 2 into this equation, I get y equals x minus 2 squared. Okay, so it appears as a negative number within there because um, the equation we started with was x minus h. So if h is a positive number, it's x minus 2. So if h is 2, it's x minus 2. Okay, so this would move 2 to the right because the h value is actually positive 2 because our equation we started with is x minus h. So hopefully you can see that here. Let's say h was negative 2. So h is less than 0. Negative 2 is less than 0. When we plug that into this equation here, y equals x minus h squared, we get y equals x minus negative 2 squared. And what happens when you subtract a negative? It changes to adding. So that gives you x plus 2 squared. So you see a plus when your h value was negative. So hopefully you can see that. So when h is less than 0, as in right here, when h is negative 2, it'll appear inside the brackets as a plus because we were subtracting h to begin with. So when h is le less than 0, the graph is translated h units to the left. OK? 
Okay, so right here when we have x minus one squared. The h value is actually positive one because it's x minus h. That's why we see x minus one, and that moves to the right because the h value is greater than zero. Here, the h value is three. That's why it moves three to the right because when h is greater than zero, it moves to the right. Here, our h value was negative two. That's why it moved to the left. I had x minus negative two. That's why it appears as x plus two. That's why it moves to the left, because when h is less than zero, it moves to the left. And here, my h value was negative three, because I had x minus negative three, um, which changes to x plus three. And then when h is less than zero, it moves to the left. Okay? You might be wondering, okay, like why um, does it move right when I see x minus one here? Okay? Why it's going to move to the right? Let's say you're solving for the x coordinate. Okay, moving left and right, that's dealing with the x coordinates. Let's say you're solving for the x coordinate. Let's say you know the y coordinate is zero, and you're solving for the x coordinate of the vertex. Let's do that. So we know the y coordinate is zero. Let's say you're solving for the x coordinate. Um, you're going to square root zero. It gives you zero. Move, now you're going to have to move the one to the other side. So on the, when you move this negative one to the other side, it's going to become a plus one. So this transporting it across the equal sign is, is where you're going to get um, it, it changing signs like that. That's why when it appears as a minus one here, when we move it to the other side, it becomes a plus one, and the x coordinate is actually going to be positive one move to the right. Okay? So maybe that clears it up a little bit for you. If not, um, just make sure you remember um, when you see x minus 1, it moves to the right. So x minus h moves to the right. Um, so you'll see a minus when the, h when the h value is actually greater than 0. And you'll see a plus when the h value is actually less than 0. And you're going to know it moves to the left. All right. Now let's look at um, how varying the a value um, changes the shape of the graph of y equals x squared. So the first one we looked at was y equals 2x squared. And you should have seen that it looks just like y equals x squared, but it's a little bit thinner. And what we say is that it's been vertically stretched. If you then looked at the graph of y equals 4x squared, you would see it gets even thinner still. So it's been vertically stretched even more. Then we looked at the graph of y equals negative x squared. So we're essentially multiplying the graph of y equals x squared by negative 1. And what happens is, what that does, let's see if I can rotate this, it actually flips the parabola of y equals x squared upside down. So it looks just like y equals x squared, but it's upside down. And what we say is that it's been reflected in the x-axis. So this graph of y equals x squared, if you think of this x-axis as a mirror, when you multiply y equals x squared by negative 1, this x-axis becomes a mirror, and you see the reflection on the x-axis. Okay, so you take y equals x squared, you flip it upside down, that gives you the graph of y equals negative x squared. So the graph of y equals negative 2x squared will look just like y equals 2x squared, but it will be flipped upside down. It'll be reflected in the x-axis. So y equals 2x squared is the blue one, so it'll look just like this blue one. I'll show you that. It'll look just like this blue one here, but it will be flipped upside down. Okay, and the x remember the x-axis is um, is the mirror. Okay, so it's reflected in the x-axis. Good. So that's what it looks like right there. Now let's look at what happens when the a value is a fraction. So here's y equals x squared. If you have the graph of y equals one over two x squared, I'm going to have to do this freehand. Okay, y equals one over two x squared. You should have seen that it gets slightly wider. Okay. So it would look something like that, okay? Graph of y equals 1 over 8x squared. That should look even wider still. So it should look something like this, okay? If you have the graph of y equals negative 1 over 2x squared. Oh, I forgot the x here. I should add that in. Y equals negative 1 over 2x squared. That will look exactly like y equals 1 over 2x squared, 
but because it's negative, it's going to be reflected in the x-axis. It's going to be flipped upside down. So it'll look just like um, this one here, this blue one. So why don't I just copy and paste that? But it will be flipped upside down. So I'm going to make this green, and I'm going to flip it upside down. And the x-axis is going to be, um, it's going to be reflected in the x-axis, so it'll be looked just like this. And then y equals negative 1 over 4x squared. Well, it won't be quite as wide as 1 over 8x squared, um, but it'll be wider than 1 over 2x squared, and it's going to be flipped upside down because it's negative. Let's see if I can draw this. I need purple. I don't have purple. I will just do it in, I'll do another one in green. So this is y equals negative 1 over 4x squared. It's going to be slightly wider. Oop, that's a bad one, but we'll leave it for now. Slightly wider, but not quite as wide as 1 over 8x squared. So that's all these together. And like I said, hopefully you've done the investigation and seen this already. Now let's just quickly summarize how varying the value of A um, transforms the quadratic relation. So A represents the vertical, I already said this, um, stretch. Or, I didn't mention this part, or compression. Okay, when those parabolas were getting wider, we call that a vertical compression. And it's always by a factor of whatever the A value is. And we also noticed whenever the A value was positive, like 1 over 2 or 1 over 8 or 2 or 4, the parabola always opened up. That's how we got all the upward opening parabolas. So if A is greater than 0, the parabola opens up. If A is less than 0, the parabola opens down. So whenever we had a negative A value, it reflect, reflected the problem in the x-axis, so it flipped it upside down. Okay, when A was greater than 1 or less than negative 1, so for example, these ones, when A was greater than 1 or less than negative 1, like this one, what happened was it was stretched, it got thinner. So we say that it was vertically stretched. It is stretched vertically, or it narrows, okay? And this notation here, it looks complicated, but all it really means is, so if A is greater than negative 1 or less than 0, or greater than 0 or less than 1, what that really means is if A is a value between negative 1 and 1, but not 0, then it is compressed. So if your A value has a value between negative 1 and 1, so like these ones, so I got an A value of 0 0.5, okay, and 1 eighth is between negative 1 and 1, um, negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.25, those are L values between negative 1 and 1. So when you see a fraction, unless it's an improper fraction, it's going to have a value between negative 1 and 1. So a fraction is a good indicator um, that you're going to have a vertical compression because it will have a value between negative 1 and 1 and, and not 0. If you have an A value of 0, your function is gone. If you multiply x squared by 0, you're left with just y equals 0. Okay? And then you're just left with the equation of the x-axis. Okay? So let's just quickly summarize everything from the investigation. So this is vertex form. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. a is responsible for vertical stretch or compression. So if a is bigger than 1 or less than negative 1, it's stretched. If a is a fraction between negative 1 and 1, but not 0, it's vertically compressed. And we know if a is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. H is responsible for the horizontal translation. Um, it moves to the right if H is positive. So if H was 2, remember I would plug in 2 here and I would get x minus 2 squared. That would move it to the right 2 because the H value is actually positive 2. If H is negative, so if H was negative 2, I would plug it in. I get x minus negative 2 squared and that would change to x plus 2 squared. So that would be an h value of negative 2. That moves it to the left, h units. Vertical translation, my k value, I know that it is, um, it moves up if the k value is positive. If the k value is negative, it moves down. Okay. So after you finish this investigation and you understand all of this, make sure um, you don't have a textbook, so don't do this, but there is a worksheet in the link that you can um, practice these transformations of parabolas. Okay, so that's it. And also make sure you fill out the, the vertex form placement. It'll be a good reference guide for you as you work through this unit. Okay, if you have any questions, make sure you let me know.